Uh, hi, Emily. Hi, Alex. Happy to hear you. Yeah, likewise. So uh, tell us a few words about uh, you and uh, the project you're working on. Sure, it's a great pleasure. Um, I'm Emily, <laughs> Emily Drow. I'm an engineer. Uh, I have my master's degree in computer science. Uh, I started my career as a software engineer, and then I moved into this data science sphere. I started as a data scientist at Yandex almost 10 years ago, and then became a chief data scientist at Yandex Data Factory, where we built the solutions services uh, based on the data for different companies from many industries. Later, I moved to this startup life and became a CTO and co-founder of Evidently. And Evidently is an open source tool to evaluate and monitor machine learning models. Um, we particularly focus on the production phase, where you already have your model in production and make sure that it works as expected. Um, if you do not have uh, ground truth labels, we also can help. So we can build things like data drift and prediction drift, which is uh, also useful as an early monitoring. And so later when you have the ground truth labels, you can get more detailed uh, results uh, about uh, model performance, like error distributions, uh, connections between the error size and feature values, underperformance segments and things like this. So um, basically there are two ways how you can use Evidently. First is for ad hoc analysis. And for doing this, you can run Evidently from Jupyter notebook and create uh, visual interactive uh, reports to analyze and share with the colleagues. And you can also do it with help of command line interface. Uh, and uh, the second uh, scenario is more for regular production use where you're more interested in getting digits. And for doing this, you can generate the JSON report and later integrate it with tools like uh, Airflow, Emilflow, Grafana, whatever you use for monitoring. So that's it, basically. That sounds quite exciting. Do you have a demo? Can you show us a demo? Yeah, sure. I'm excited to share. So I prepared a Jupyter notebook. Hopefully, you can see it like now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here I'm going to demonstrate how you can use evidently in a very early stage where you just have your data, uh, I mean input data, and want to make sure that there is no things like data drift or prediction drift, and you can continue to use the existing model. Um, so for demonstration, I'm using um, my Jupyter notebook. And let me start from importing a couple of things like Pandas and Skykitler. This is a standard tool that every data scientist uses to uh, work with the data and build the models. And uh, I'm also importing the dashboard and profile form evidently. This is the main things we are going to use. Dashboard to generate interactive report and JSON uh, in profile form make a JSON. So uh, I'm going to use uh, the toy data set Boston. And of course, it's uh, literally uh, very simple to take your own data set and substitute it uh, like this. But <laughs> for making a demo, I decided to take something standard. So this is the table data. Basically, that's how it looks like. Uh, we have several columns that describes uh, the um, house. And uh, we need to predict the price. Um, evidently, can help to build the report. And uh, basically, evidently can um, automatically parse your data and figure out where is the prediction, where is the target, of course, if it's called prediction and target, and um, what are the type of the columns, the type of the features. But if you have something uh, a bit more unexpected, for example, you have the categorical feature and you encode this with, digit, it, with digits because for building model, it makes sense. Then uh, it makes sense to create a column mapping, which will help evidently to parse your data correctly. So this is the example of such column mapping. This is the basic uh, Python dictionary where we have values like target and prediction. And um, our target, I'm going to call it target. So I already use this key. Uh, there is no model yet, so no prediction, no date time uh, in the initial data set. And that's how we split data between numerical and categorical features. So that's our object. And basically we have all to build uh, our report. Let's just quickly add the target to our data frame. So now it looks like this. And we are ready to build the dashboard. 
Uh, to do this, we just created the dashboard object. We already imported it from uh, evidently a couple of steps ago. Here it is. And to configure it, we need to select which tabs we are going to build. So each tab is dedicated to some uh, part of the report. For example, data drift is <laughs> basically a data drift. So we will estimate the uh, data drift for each individual feature and create some um, aggregated statistics for the data set. And uh, we are working with the regression problem. This is why our target is numerical and we also can generate the numerical target drift. Here it is. So that's how we create an object. And to build the actual report, we need to run method calculate, which will build it. And uh, basically to create any drift report, we need to have two data sets, right? Because uh, we basically need to compare the current data, for example, with the reference one. Um, and uh, here again, just split our data into two parts. For example, we use first 200 counts as the reference and second uh, as a current or do something like this. So that's exactly what we are doing there and uh, adding our column mapping to make sure that evidently we'll parse our data in the right way. So here it is. And now uh, we have our dashboard ready and we can just call method show uh, to explore it there in Jupyter Notebook. So now it's loading and it's ready. Now let's see what do we have there. And uh, we had two parts of our report. First was data drift, so here it is. And we can see that we have a lot of drifted features. Basically it happens like this because we initially uh, split the data uh, without any um, uh, any mixes, right? So we just split it in exactly uh, in order it was. This is <laughs> why we have a, a lot of drifts. And we can open each column, for example, first one, and see a more detailed how our data looks like. So basically, this is the reason <laughs> for having a drift and the distributions. So we can open up uh, as many features as we want to analyze. Um, the in report is interactive, so we can do any zoom in to see what exactly is happening. And if we need, for example, to download any distribution and send it over to Calyx, we can easily do it, for example, by downloading any picture as a uh, PNG file and I uh, use it, right? So it's quite handy. And uh, after data drift, we have our prediction drift, which is very nice, especially in phase where we do not have a target. At least you can compare whether the output of the model changes, for example, between the training stage and current production stage and see what is happening. So here we also have a drift. So models output um, changed. And again, uh, analyze why. We can see that even the range of prediction has changed. And we also have some additional information like the relation between the uh, model's output and the features. So here it is. There are uh, quite some changes there. And that's how target value looks uh, like. So we can also compare it and see what, what has happened. Uh, we also have the table, uh, which shows us how the prediction uh, behavior changed uh, because of feature values. So we can also open it and see um, what are the dependency between the model's output value and each feature value. Some, sometimes there can be some uh, connections and sometimes it helps to dig deeper and figure out um, is there any dependency between the feature values and the target value. So this is how a report looks like. And sometimes it's quite handy to not just have this report inside uh, of Jupyter notebook, but also generate it as the standalone HTML file and send it over to Calic. And for doing this, you can just uh, instead, instead of method save, uh, use method uh, OSRs instead of method show, of course, uh, use method save. For doing this, you just need to write the path there, for example, demo, and let me call it, just call it report, not the best name, obviously, <laughs> but just trying to save you some time. And that's how we can do it. Now let's, um, open the file and see how it looks like. Probably for doing this, I need to create a new share. Let me do like this. So now I believe you will see my finder, right? 
yeah, and that's the demo. I can see that we just generated this file. And let's see how it looks like. It's also opening in browser. So yeah, that's the same uh, report, but as a standalone file. And sometimes it's much easier to send it over to Kalec and discuss what you can see, for example, with process engineers or uh, the main area specialists. So that's how you can run evidently for an ad hoc analysis and for the integration or for regular use. Sometimes it's much more convenient to have the output in a JSON format. And for doing this, instead of dashboard, you can create a profile. Again, specify the sections in profile. Let's build the data gist and target gist. So same parts here. You can see that it's much, much faster. So no visualization there. This is why it calculates uh, really like in real time. And that's how it looks like. So we have a nice JSON where we can get any value by key, for example, the name of the report, uh, any metrics. Uh, it also have the histograms there. So we can, for example, use any external tool to visualization and get any p-value, for example, compare it to some threshold and raise an alarm if something is above or below the threshold. So that's basically how Idently can help to figure out what is happening with the model or set up the production monitoring. Oh, that's cool. Thanks for the demo. If somebody wants to play with the same notebook, is it uh, available somewhere on your GitHub? Yeah, sure. We have an examples um, folder there, and this notebook is available there, together mm -hmm. with many more interested, I believe. Can, can you show us how we can find these uh, examples, and what are the other examples you have in your GitHub repo? Yeah, sure. Let me just open it. Should be fast. Yeah, so that's uh, our public re uh, repository. Just go inside the evidently. Here we have examples and many, many different things there. For example, a uh, really nice case about uh, bicycle demand predictions where we built a lot of different uh, dashboards like model performance, data drift, target drift. So if you're interested, see it. And uh, together with some uh, examples, we also have a couple of tutorials. I believe it also may be useful. For example, we have a tutorial about um, using um, evidently together with MLflow. So we can see how we can put the metrics which was calculated with help of evidently into MLflow and see how it looks like. So. Uh, we use MLflow tracking there. And they also have an integration with Airflow, I mean tutorial. So if someone is interested, it's also available in the same folder. Yeah, cool, thanks. I saw that there is an open pull request. If somebody wants to contribute to Evidently, <laughs> what should they do? Uh, currently, I'm working uh, on the contribution guide guide so it will be really much more convenient soon but right now you can just send us pull request or uh, better join our dashboard channel and let's discuss mm -hmm. um, so how many people are working on on the tool now uh, now uh, practically it's um, <laughs> two and a half so it's me and one more uh, uh, part-time engineer for writing the code and yes we are hiring and we are going to hire more engineers like in a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. But in general, uh, so you, you also have a co-founder, but like in sure. your companies, uh, two, uh, two people and a working half. full time, <laughs> two and a half, okay. <laughs> I see. So, Which is important, yeah. <laughs> yes. So what are your plans? Oh, we have a lot of plans. Uh, now we are working on our architecture. So we have to, um, let's say, big refactoring. We are going to... Uh, make it much easier for contributors to create new things. For example, create their own new um, reports uh, and dashboards. Uh, and uh, yes, we are working on that. And we are also updating our UI in order to make it faster and uh, to help evidently work better in different environments like Colab and so on. And we have a lot of plans for the next stage. We are going to create many new useful reports, I believe, add a lot of statistics. And I'm especially excited about the um, underperforming segments. We want to uh, create a lot of stuff that helps to figure out where exactly model works worse and why it has happened. 
And we have, uh, we uh, talk to our users a lot and we know that they are now struggling with the larger data sets. It's quite hard to run uh, evidently for bigger data sets. I mean, we, of course we have sampling, but uh, we do not have uh, ability to run evidently in distributed architecture and we are going to edit alpha. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, uh, that's a lot of, uh, like you have a lot of plans. Yeah, um, that's why we are going to add more engineers to our team. So you're hiring currently, are you? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So how can people apply? <laughs> I believe the best way right now is just uh, write us uh, in any channels uh, or write us a mail or in our Discord channel, we will be happy to chat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. So what is the most interesting insight you got from, uh, you learned from users of your tool? Oh, actually, we are learning um, a lot, really, because we talk to many people now. And I believe the most unexpected thing was that uh, people tend to use us not uh, only during the monitoring phase, but also for ad hoc analysis. And uh, very often, they perform the side-by-side -side comparison of uh, two models with help of evidence. So uh, we expected it to be like comparison between the training and testing phase or between the uh, historical data and production usage. But uh, it's uh, also a pretty popular scenario where you have two different models, for example, different algorithms, and you compare it uh, between each other with help of uh, evidently. Oh, that's a pretty cool application. I didn't think about that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have any advice for the listeners? Um, well, yeah, uh, during our discussions with the users, uh, we heard a lot of horror stories of what has happened uh, with the model that left unmonitored. So my advice is do not to be that guy and keep all your models and let's say all production services in check. Okay, so that's, uh, that's great advice. Thanks a lot, Emily. Thanks for your time. Thanks for showing uh, us a demo. And uh, yeah, thanks for, for coming. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.